Good afternoon, Great Jeff Learners. Uh, my name is Mr. Mbusha from Ulwazi High School. I'm a physical science teacher. Um, today, our lesson will be on electricity and magnetism. Uh, that is going to contain uh, 50 marks on paper one, and also that is 30%, about 30% now in your paper one. So electricity and magnetism, there is going to be question seven, electrostatics, that is question eight, that is electric circuits, then question nine, electrodynamics. So for today, I will be doing, doing um, uh, question seven, that is electrostatics. Um, <clears throat> okay, just a recap now from uh, grade 10. A recap from grade 10. So if we're given now uh, two identical spheres that are mounted on a stand, let's say here we're having Q1, and here we're having Q2, Q1 is positive, then Q2 is negative. Then we're being told that... Um, Q1 and Q2, they were allowed to, to touch. They were allowed to, to touch. Um, let me make this one. Okay. Um, they were allowed to, to touch. So this is positive, this is negative. Uh, my Q1, this here is my Q2. So also separated to their original position. This is still my Q1, then this is my Q2. Okay, so listen what is happening here. So if we're having now a negative charge, that means now this one contains electrons that are in excess, contains electrons that are more than protons, but if the charge is positive, that means now this one contains electron deficiency. So the protons are more than the electrons here. Okay, and also what's happening here? So um, let me just make section here. This is A, uh, then this is B, then this is C. So on A, what's happening there on A? So as we know that a positive and a negative are unlike charges, also they will attract. So that's the idea that is um, we're trying to bring um, to you. Okay. That's the idea that we're trying to bring to you. Um, okay, my string is fine. The idea is that if they are attracting them, that's when they are going to be um, allowed to, to touch. So if they are allowed to, to touch, there, there will be transfer of electrons during touching. So that transfer of electrons then is going to be from a negatively charged sphere to a positively charged sphere. Since this negative containing an excess electron, so a positive contains a shortage of electrons then. So when they touch, electrons will be transferred. So uh, during B, there will be a transfer of electron. There will be transfer of the electrons then during the conduct. Okay? So this transfer of electron there is happening uh, also until this transfer of electron there is going to happen until that is Q1 and Q2 have equal charges in terms of the magnitude and also in terms of the sign. So when they are separated there, that is now we're on point C. When they are separated then, then they are going to contain the same charge. They will have the same charge. Maybe they will, this one's going to be positive and also this one's going to be positive. If, um, okay, maybe this one's going to be two coulomb, positive two coulomb, also Q2 is going to be, that is positive, two column. They are going to contain the same charge, okay? Then again, on this question here, um, you will have um, a question that is going to ask you, calculate the, um, the number of electrons that were transferred during the conduct. So the number of electrons that were transferred during conduct, uh, we'll calculate that one. On your data sheet, there is given an equation that is saying Q divided by uh, QE, that is the charge of an electron here, okay? But now in your mind, you must always think of this one as your Q final minus your Q initial, okay? So if it's Q final minus Q initial, that is now, that means um, the Q final is a charge 
that is, is the charge after the conduct. Then this one is the charge here, that is the initial here, is the charge before conduct here, this one, okay? So your N is going to be U final minus U initial all divided by U E. Then on this one of the Q final then, is either you take the charge of Q1 or you take the charge of Okay, so sometimes they, they will ask you that is to calculate the number of electrons that were transferred during conduct, okay? So this is the equation that we're going to use from the formula sheet, Q divided by QE, the charge of an electron. But bear in mind that that Q is Q final minus Q initial. So what is Q final and Q initial? Uh, Q initial. So the Q final here this is the one that is containing the same charge that now after conduct. So then the initial one is that Q1 and Q2 before conduct. Okay. Then on Q initial you can choose any as Q1 or maybe you can choose as Q2. But bear in mind that um, for um, for the charge, if the charge is negative, maybe Q1 is negative, or in this case, Q2 is negative. So that now we have to put also that negative. This is a negative of the equation then. So if it's negative, you must put a bracket and also put that negative then. And also, if now they want to calculate the new charge, so Q nu, you will use an equation that is um, Q net divided by 2. So your Q net there is going to be your Q1 before conduct plus Q2 before conduct all divided by 2. So if it's negative, you put it negative. If it's positive, you put it as positive, okay? Then um, from there, we go to that is the electrostatic force. The electrostatic force. So on the electrostatic force, or for electrostatic force, um, so if we have now a charge, positive charge, and a negative charge here, or also that is a positive one there. So I have in here that is Q1, Q2, and Q3. They are separated by the distance R in between them, distance R in between, okay? Then uh, they want now to calculate F net, at, at Q2, Q2, Q1, and Q3. So that's our question then, that now we want F net here, that is on Q2, due to the presence of Q1 and Q3. So here, the, the technique is that, the technique is that um, you must do a free body diagram then, or a force diagram, okay, on Q2. So now we're focusing now in terms of the movement of Q2. So since now um, our equation is saying F is equal to K, Q1 multiplied by Q2 all divided by R squared. So we're having only two charges that we can accommodate in that formula. So what we can do? <clears throat> so we are going to focus on two charges at a time, okay? So we're focusing on Q1 and Q2. And ask ourselves now, What's going to happen now to the movement of Q2 due to Q1? So we look at the nature of the charge. So Q1 is positive, then Q2 is negative. So that's going to be the attraction force. So if they are attracting, so where Q2 is going to go? So Q2 is going to go towards Q1. So that means now it's going to go on the left. So this one, you can call it now force 1, or you can rather say force F Q1 on Q2, okay? So we are done with that. So you know that force is going to go on the left. Then we focus again now on Q2 and Q3. So <clears throat> on Q2 and Q3, we look at the nature of the charge, then Q2 is negative, then Q3 is positive. So you ask yourself where Q2 is going to go if now is a, there is a presence of Q3. So that's a force of attraction. So Q2 have to go towards, uh, sorry, then Q2 have to go towards, um, that is, Q2 we have to go towards Q3, then this one can call it F2, okay? So this one uh, is giving you a clear image of what's going to happen to your F net because now this one are in a straight line. So if they are in a straight line, we know that now the force are moving in the same direction we add them, 
then the force that are moving in opposite direction we have to subtract them so we are going to have calculate now that is f1 which will be k q1 times q2 divided by r squared so we are consider this charge and also you consider that charge so you calculate f1 then you get the direction so the direction there is going to be left then again you go and calculate f2 so f2 is going to be k q2 times q3 all divided by r squared then after you calculated that one you put the value that now we are focusing now on q2 and q3 then you get the force your, your, your force there in newtons then this one is going towards east or to the to the right okay so now this one is giving you an overview of what's going to happen now in terms of um your net force so your net force here is, since they are moving in the opposite direction that's going to be f1 plus into minus that is f2 that now we have to subtract them since they are going in the opposite direction but if they were to go in the same direction mean that now we're supposed to add them but those are the forces that are moving in the same direction. So that's another way that we calculate now. That is, um, that is, we calculate the F net on Q2, Q2, Q1, and Q3. If the charges are in collinear, that is now horizontal like that. Now, again, another way of calculating that is, um, that is the, the net force. But now we are given now, um, let me say Q1 here positive. Uh, negative or positive then this one is negative okay so um, separate it again by distance r also distance r here so this is q1 this is q2 then this is q3 again one f net um, on on q2 then the idea now how are we going to calculate now the f net okay so again nothing have changed nothing have changed k q1 um, times Q2 divided by R squared. Again, we're still accommodating in this formula that is two charges only. That means now we need to focus on two charges uh, at a time. Okay? So on this one, <clears throat> again, we do a free body diagram on Q2. So we're looking at the movement of Q2. Q2, Q1. So we focus on Q1 and also on Q2. So they are both positive in this case. So if they are both positive, those are like charges. So that means now like charges uh, repel, so that now Q2 is going to move away from Q1. So Q2 is going to move towards the right. So we're having, that is, that is F1, okay? Then again, we look again, that is between Q2 and Q3. So we look at the, the nature of the charge, so it's positive and negative. So if it's positive and negative, that's attract, that means they're moving towards each other. So Q2 is going to move towards Q3, so it's going to go downwards. So this one is going to call it F2. So in that case, that means now we have now a right angle triangle there. So if we are to calculate now the F net here, so we have to use what you call Pythagoras theorem here. So here in this case, we are not adding, we are not separating because they are acting now in two dimension. So in terms of calculating, so we are going to calculate F1 using K, Q1, Q2 divided by R squared. Then you get your answer is going to go towards east then again you calculate um, f2 so f2 is going to k q1 uh, sorry q2 is going to be q2 this case and q3 divided by r squared then you get your answer then this one is going to go down okay then from here then from here in terms of calculating the net force so the net force is going to be f net uh, squared is equal to F1 F1 squared plus F2 squared there. Then you take, um, you substitute all those forces you got on F1 plus squared then the force that you got on F2 and squared then you got the final answer there. So in two dimension that now we have to use that is what you call a Pythagoras theorem here in terms of calculating our net force our net force there so that's the two way of calculating the net force on on the charge okay then um if we move again uh to the electric field to the electric field at a point how to calculate the net electric field at a point so for that one <clears throat> 
So by electric field as K divided by R squared. So we're only focusing now on one K now. Okay, so only focusing on one K. So on this case, if we're having Q1, uh, maybe the point, then we're having um, Q2, this Q1 is positive, then Q2 is negative, then we're having, let's say, point P. So a point in our mind every time a point is positive there. And here we're focusing on the movement of, of the point. So if we were to do the pre body diagram, or if we want F net or E net, sorry, the E net and the net electrostatic, uh, the net electric field at a point P. So we're looking at the movement of our point. So we ask ourselves where this point is going to go due to the presence of Q1. So the point is positive, also Q1 is positive. So that means now this point is going to move away, but they are repelling each other. So this one is going to be your E1. Then also you focus now on the point and Q2. So the point and Q2, then the point is positive, then the Q2 is negative. So that the point is going to be the attraction. So the point is going to go towards Q2. So this one is going to be your E2. So this one is giving you that they are moving now in the same direction. So your E net in this case, you have to say E1 plus E2 since they are moving now in the same direction. So your E net in this case, you have to say E1 plus E2 now in the same direction. So your E net in this case, you have to say E1 plus E2.